Hello everyone this is part 5 of what if Naruto had a proper teacher, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. Tsukinuta vs Temari. Kakashi was curious on the abilities of the Oto Nin. The fight proved to be fairly straightforward and not very interesting. Temari kept her distance against a shinobi with potentially unknown abilities. Dosu tried to close the distance however Temari used her futon elemental release to drive him back. Dosu became desperate and tried to push forward anyway and was blown clear across the arena and smashed into the wall. A smashed rib punctured his lung and he coughed up blood. Hayat called the match before the sound nin died of blood loss. Sakura shook her head and whispered, wow she doesn't mess around. Kakashi wasn't surprised that the Kazekage's daughter was impressive. I still would place my chips on this team against the sand siblings but it would be a close battle. She is definitely Chunin material. While Kakashi mapped out what a potential battle would look like in his head he watched the electronic board as a new set of names appeared. It turned out to be Yoroi Kado versus Shikamaru Nara. The two opponents walked to the center of the arena. The fight began with Yoroi attempting to get in close. Sasuke had been disappointed by the first fight and hoped some new jutsu would be thrown out. It was not to be. Yoroi tried to close in to absorb the Nara's chakra. Shikamaru countered by backing up and throwing a kunai with an explosive tag attached to it at the ground. Yoroi was able to dodge away but the blast still lifted him upwards. With Yoroi airborne it was impossible for him to change his trajectory. Shikamaru simply let his shadow extend and grab the older Genin. Kabuto's teammate was trapped and now prone on the ground. Shikamaru pulled a kunai from his shin, a place most shinobi would not place a kunai. He then hefted it and made ready to throw. With Yoroi completely paralyzed and mimicking his opponent's moves he would have no way to counter the attack. He tried to break free of the Kijmain no Jutsu but he wouldn't have time. Shikamaru announced, either you forfeit or this kunai hits you in the neck. His voice had a cold tone that Naruto was not used to. Did something happen in the forest of death, Naruto wondered. Akado had no choice but to surrender and Shikamaru passed on to the next round. Sasuke was rather frustrated at the lack of jutsu being used. The Kijmain no jutsu was a result of a bloodline and therefore was not something he could copy. He kept his face impassive as he watched the billboard light up with two new names. Neji Hyuga vs Kin Suchi. Kin looked sour at the matchup while Neji looked confident. Guy shouted, Neji showcase the power of your youth. Neji suppressed a sigh as he made ready to advance. Sasuke was very interested in Neji's capabilities. Again he was disappointed in the match. The completely lopsided combat did prove Neji as worthy of a Chunin promotion, at least in terms of ability but he had not needed to push himself. Projectiles were useless with Neji's dojutsu and with Kin being a Senban user the outcome truly was foreordained. After toying with his opponent for a few minutes he went in close and finished Kin off with his clan's gentle fist fighting style. Kin collapsed on the ground, her chakra points closed and her body bleeding internally. She cursed Neji and then forfeited. Naruto turned to Kakashi, that was pretty dumb of him wasn't it? Kakashi quirked his eyebrow and the nodded, yes he flaunted his ability when the match could have been decided in seconds. When you take your exams one day I expect none of you to needlessly showboat. Sasuke was irritated that he had not been able to see the full extent of the genius of the class his senior. The speed Neji had wasn't at Sasuke's level but he had no idea if Neji had been holding back against his outclassed opponent. His musings were interrupted by the announcement of the next fight. Ino Yamanaka vs Misumi Surugi. 30 seconds was the length of the fight. Misumi used his Nan no Kaizo, soft physique modification, to stretch his body around the blonde girl. Ino shrieked as the flesh of her opponent met hers, she was completely grossed out and forfeited the match immediately after her scream. Asuma buried his face in his hands, to be the sensei of a shinobi who had performed that pulley was embarrassing. Sakura felt bad for her one-time friend. That was a rather humiliating way to end Ino's Chunin exam. A shinobi could not afford to be squeamish, on the field there would be far worse things than a malleable body. Sasuke bowed his head toward his sensei. HNN you were right, challenging myself against this lot would have been worthless. 
Kakashi looked at the Uchiha, they aren't all that bad. Rock Lee for example has been using weights longer than you have and would give you a run for your money in a taijutsu fight even with your Sharingan. This also intrigued Naruto, weight training had been an incredible boon to his strength and speed. He was excited to see how Lee did in his match. The next match was Tenten versus Zaku. Naruto had to resist the urge to shout out his support for Tenten. While he hadn't had a whole lot of interaction with her, he had deeply appreciated the assistance she had provided in helping him learn which weapon suited him. He silently cheered as the match began. Tenten was a distance fighter and so began the match by hurling a variety of weapons at Zaku. Zaku laughed and responded with his Zankua, decapitating airwaves. The blasts of air and sound from his arms pushed the kunai, shuriken and other weapons away. Tenten did not let up, she continued to send more and more weapons towards her opponent. Zaku taunted her, your weapons are useless, my arms can knock anything down you throw at me. Tenten saw that her attacks were ineffective and decided to go with her ultimate attack. Soshoyu, twin rising dragons, she placed the scrolls in the air and activated her custom-made jutsu. Rising into the air above the smoke she hurled a ridiculous amount of weapons down at her opponent. Zaku was hard-pressed to keep up but he was able to scatter the weapons around the arena with rapid and repeated blasts from his arms. Zaku scoffed when the attack was over, that all you got little girl. Tenten kept her face impassive as she manipulated the fallen weapons with the wires that had been attached to them. With incredible skill she pulled the weapons toward Zaku from multiple directions. Zaku tried to blast them all away but his defense did not cover all directions. He tried to dodge but couldn't get out of the way in time and a kunai buried itself in his side and a shuriken in back of his leg. Zaku cried out with pain, tent and circled her opponent warily, picking up some of the discarded weapons. Zaku was bleeding from both wounds and tried to hit Tenten with his air waves but she was out of range. Blood pooled from both wounds, and he could barely stand let alone chase Tenten down. Tears of frustration and shame filled his eyes and Hayat asked, do you want to forfeit? Zaku screamed no and tried to rush Tenten in an awkward charge. Naruto looked on with a bit of pity, clearly Zaku wanted to win desperately. Tenten ran to the side forcing Zaku to turn to try to close in. With her superior speed she literally ran a circle around Zaku. The genin from Oto cursed her for a coward and futilely tried to blast her with his arms but the range was too far to be effective. Tenten knew the wounds were bleeding heavily, the kunai in his side the most significant wound. All she had to do was keep her distance and Zaku would collapse from blood loss. The battle, continued, on for another 10 minutes before Zaku finally collapsed to the ground defeated. Naruto was happy for Tenten, she had fought strategically even with a horrible disadvantage. When she had the upper hand she kept her cool and took the sure victory instead of attempting a flashy finish. It was a fight that Kakashi would have been proud of. Guy congratulated Tenten and the arena was cleared of the weapons before the next match. The next battle would be Choji vs Gara. Lee caused quite a scene when the board showed the two competitors. It would mean he would not be fighting in the preliminaries. Guy tried to console his student, promising that he would be able to show his youth in the final part of the Chunin exams. With the disruption ended the match could start. Naruto was anxious as he watched the two make their way to the center. Gara was bad news, he felt it in his bones. Kakashi was also concerned. He had analyzed the available data on Gara and had come to the conclusion that the boy was like Naruto, he was a Jinchuriki. Unlike Naruto, Gara had little control and was psychotic. The information Kanoa had on the missions Gara completed for Suna showed that he reveled in killing. Joji was a bit unsteady entering the arena. His sensei had promised him barbecue if he had done well but the boy in front of him unnerved him. Shikamaru had told him not to mess around and to forfeit the instant it was looking bad. He had never seen his laid-back friend so intently serious before and that was the reason for his nerves. The battle began with Choji using his Baika no Jutsu multi-size technique. The jutsu expanded Choji's body which allowed him to better utilize Nikuden's sensha human bullet tank. Choji turned into a ball and rushed forward hoping to smash the smaller genin with one attack. Gara didn't even move. His sand erupted in front of him stopping the momentum cold. Choji rolled backwards trying to get even more speed to smash through the sand. Again Gara made no move. He didn't even blink as the ball smashed into the sand. Pathetic, your blood won't please mother but I will still take it. 
Gara announced as the sand whipped about him in a frenzy. Joji was a bit disoriented from the two failed attacks and tried to hastily back away from the sand. With his disorientated he fell backwards and the sand surged toward him. I forfeit, he screamed. Gara ignored the announcement and said, Sabaku Soso, sand waterfall funereal. The sand that covered Choji instantly tried to implode the young Genin. Guy dashed forward along with Hayat smashing the bulk of the sand away from Choji, however some of the sand was still able to complete the attack. Sand crushed Choji's left leg at knee height. Choji screamed in pain and Hayat angrily said, the match is over, stand down or be disqualified. Gara stared at the proctor for a moment and then walked back to the sideline. The medical team rushed in to tend to Choji. To Naruto's horror he could see Choji's lower leg had been completely pulped. Sakura gasped and put her hands up to her face. With her medical training she knew exactly how bad the damage was. The medics would have no choice, they would have to amputate the leg at the knee. Shikamaru quivered with rage, if Guy and Hayat had move even a half second later his best friend would be dead. Asuma was shocked at the damage, guilt racked him. He hadn't moved to help defend his student because he thought the others were handling it. And now Choji's career as a shinobi could very well be over. Asuma hurried after the medical team. An awkward silence filled the primarily Kanoa-filled area. Many of the genin were furious at Gara for what he had done. Naruto spoke, that bastard, he was going to kill Choji. I'll kill him for this, that's a promise. Kakashi looked at his student, Naruto think about what you are saying. That is the Kazekage's son. You killing him could start a war with Suna, and would get you executed. What Gara did was wrong but within the Chunin exams things like this occur. Naruto ground his teeth in frustration. Joji had been one of the few classmates who hadn't picked on him in the academy. While they had never been close or even spent time outside of the academy he had appreciated the fact the boy wasn't a bully like so many of the others were. His thoughts were interrupted as the third Hokage began to speak. He spoke about the Chunin exams and what the aspiring Genin could expect next. There would be a one-month delay before the Chunin exams continued. Everyone would know who they would be fighting next, as part of being a Chunin meant researching your opponents and planning ahead. Naruto shook his head in sympathy as Lee cried giant anime tears at not being able to showcase his youth for another full month. The names were called out. In the top half of the bracket the first match would be Temari versus Neji. The second match would be Gara versus Misumi. The winner of the first and second match would face each other in the semi-finals after the lower bracket completed their two matches. In the second bracket it was Tenten versus Lee. And then Kankuro versus Shikamaru, the winner of these two matches would face each other in the semi-finals. The reactions were mixed. Neji and Temari eyed each other but remained impassive. Misumi looked scared while Gara looked at him with contempt. Tenten and Lee were disappointed that they would have to fight each other. Shikamaru barely paid attention to who he was facing. He was worried about his childhood friend. Up above the second tier of the arena Sasuke was curious to see how the matches would go. Both Temari and Neji were dominant in their battles and it would be a good match. Gara versus Misumi would be a joke. Lee versus Tenten would be an interesting bout since Lee was all about close-range taijutsu while Tenten favored long-range attacks. Sasuke had little interest in the match between Shikamaru and Kankuro. One favored clan jutsu that Sasuke couldn't copy and the other was a puppeteer a shinobi art that Sasuke had no interest in. As the genin below them filed out Kakashi looked at his team. This marks the end of the preliminary matches. How do you think you stack up compared to these? Naruto answered, I don't have enough information to be sure but I would be confident against most of them. Tenten is great but my futon, Repusho, wind release, gale palm, has 360 degrees of protections. Shikamaru doesn't have any area jutsu that I'm aware of so my clones would defeat him. I didn't see Kankuro or Lisa I can't say one way or the other. Misumi didn't show much but based on look of fear when he found out he would be facing Gara, I think his skills aren't as developed as they could be. Temari would be fun to fight against as another wind user but with my larger chakra reserves my jutsu would eventually win out. Neji and Gara are the only ones that would really worry me. Kakashi found the analysis reasonable. And you Sasuke. Sasuke decided to be honest. I believe I'd be able to defeat all of them. I am least confident about Gara. His sand jutsu is powerful but he could be hiding other abilities, if so that makes him very dangerous. 
I know you've told me Lee could be a handful since he's been using weights longer but with only Taijutsu to rely on I'm not that concerned. Neji might be a good opponent but as Naruto pointed out earlier he toyed with his opponent which means he'll probably make stupid mistakes. Temari is a strong Kunoiki however fire beats wind. Shikamaru's shadow jutsu relays on trickery, it doesn't move at my speed, with my Sharingan I'll be able to see it coming regardless of what else is going on. Kakashi agreed with Sasuke, tactical reasoning even if he was a shred too confident about seeing through all of Anara's tricks. Sakura. Sakura bit her lip and then said, I don't know how well they defend against genjutsu so it's hard to say. If I hit any of them with the genjutsu and it sticks I'll win. That means Neji would be the worst opponent for me to face. Kakashi didn't press Sakura for a more firm answer but asked her, and how would you face Neji? Sakura thought about it for a few moments and then responded, I'd keep my distance forcing him to chase me around the arena. At a time where my next move would be obvious to keep my distance I'd switch it up and rush him and try to time a point blank Katen, Gokaku no Jutsu, fire release, great fireball technique directly at him. Their sensei gave them an ice smile. Good tactical analysis everyone, let's head back to the training fields and work on improving jutsu speed. The melding of chakra through hand seals required intense focus not only on the hand seals themselves but on the internal process of transmuting the chakra into the required element and shape. Doing it at normal speed typically provided the most power, rushing a jutsu without properly forming the chakra weakened it or made it fail altogether. It was also an excellent way to further refine chakra control which would make chakra use more efficient when forming jutsus. Naruto wanted to check on Choji but saw that if he arrived right now people would wonder how he had already heard about his injuries. After training he would head the hospital and check on him. A part of Naruto wanted to track down Gara and get payback for Choji but he knew there would be consequences if he did that. The prognosis for Choji was not good. His leg was amputated at the knee, spelling a probable end to his shinobi career. Joji was determined to continue being a shinobi but the leg would cause problems. He could obtain a prosthetic but he could not channel chakra through it and this would slow him down if he had to travel. In addition his clan's signature jutsu would not function properly with a limb that couldn't expand. The Sandime allowed Choji to stay on the shinobi roster for now but he would not be allowed to attend any missions beyond D ranks. Naruto had seen him the night of the preliminaries and they had talked briefly. Choji's injury was a hard blow to Naruto. Up until now there had been no serious casualties in his shinobi career. None of his fellow classmates had lost their life or limb and staring at Choji's missing leg hit home many of the lessons his sensei had taught. Being a shinobi wasn't a game, it was life and death. After the practice on using jutsu rapidly Kakashi had announced there would be no training or missions the next day. Instead it would be a free day to relax a little. Kakashi had told them that they were going to be given some more specific training tailored to each of them. He had kept mum about the specifics so Naruto couldn't help but wonder. The highlight of the day was that his chakra kunais had come in. He had excitedly tried to channel chakra into them and they had hummed with blue energy. A simple toss at a target saw the target smashed through and the chakra blade flying another 40 feet before burying itself 3 feet into the ground. He would have to be careful with them. Naruto experimented with his clones. Unfortunately unlike regular kunai and equipment the chakra kunai would not be replicated when he made a shadow clone. While they looked like his custom made kunais it was impossible to channel chakra like the chakra blades. Still worth every penny, I bet that bastard Gara's sand wouldn't stop a throw from one of these. Naruto spent his day off working with his new chakra blades, he didn't know how intense the new training would be and he wanted to become proficient in what they could and couldn't do. Naruto discovered that the wind chakra did not actually make the blades go faster, it simply increased their piercing power dramatically. The blades pierced, rock, ground, trees and even metal. He would need to test it against some defensive jutsu to see how deadly it was. One test Naruto did was to throw it at his clone who then used futon, Repusho wind release, gale palm. The results were surprising, at normal power the jutsu cancelled out the piercing aspects of the kunai but still struck with force to kill. However if he had the clone overpower the jutsu it would throw the kunai off course. Good to know if I ever face someone with the wind element using thrown projectiles. 
Naruto also tested the effects of throwing regular kunai in the chakra kunai past his clones who then used the repusho to push the kunai even faster. It was tricky to get the timing right at first but once he had it he was able to do it consistently. Pleased with the results he finished out his conditioning for the day and went to Raman Ichiraku for some dinner. Asterisk break asterisk asterisk Kakashi met with the team the next morning. All three were eager to learn about the new training he had planned for them. You've seen the Chunin exams and know the abilities of the Genin in the competition. There is a lot left to teach you however with all that has been going on there is a rare opportunity for you to learn from a different sensei for a short period of time. Naruto asked, a different sensei? Why? Sasuke narrowed his eyes, he didn't want to learn from someone else he wanted to learn from the best. Unless he was apprenticing under the Sandime he didn't like this. Sakura remained silent but she also wondered what was going on. Kakashi sighed, I appreciate your loyalty but the Hokage has given me a mission, I can't provide the details. That being said I think you'll be pleased with my plans for your training while I am gone. Kakashi looked at his genin and said, for one thing you'll still meet as a team on a daily basis to work on teamwork. Incorporate the new skills that you learn and see how they synergize with the rest of the team. That will take place in the afternoons. In the morning you will be assigned to a new instructor. The team nodded, Kakashi's tone brooked no dissent. While they weren't happy they understood. Kakashi had been given a mission straight from the Hokage. Since they couldn't go on it, it was probably an A-rank mission if not an S-class. Sasuke you will be training with Rock Lee. Lee is preparing for the Chunin exams and could use a sparring partner that can keep up with his Taijutsu abilities. Since all three of Guy's students are in the Chunin exams he had decided to spend an equal amount of time with each of them. Learn from Guy, his Taijutsu skills are second only to me. While I will not give away his secrets, he does have a technique that would defeat even me. His genin looked at him with wide eyes. Defeat Kakashi Sensei. Guy was a well-known shinobi and listed as an A to S rank in other villages bingo books. But Kakashi was listed as an S rank shinobi everywhere. What kind of technique was that? Sasuke looked hungry and Kakashi shook his head, he won't show you that technique because it is a forbidden jutsu. The point is to learn from his taijutsu style and train hard with Lee. Neither of them will say a word about your abilities or your Sharingan. Hi Kakashi Sensei. Kakashi turned to Sakura. I know you've been getting lessons where you can and it has been spotty to try to find a Jonin level shinobi not on a mission. I've spoken with Kurenai and she had agreed to train you in Genjutsu. In exchange I'll be providing supplemental training when I return to her genin in Ninjutsu and Taijutsu. Sakura was happy. Kurenai was famous for being the best Genjutsu user in Kanoa. Naruto asked, what changed? I thought John and typically only taught their own team. Kakashi beamed at his pupil. That was a question he would not even have thought to ask when he had just graduated from the academy. A good question Naruto, what changed was that I'm not here to personally oversee the training of my genin team. While the Hokage has the final say I did barter a bit with him. In return for him sending me on the mission he spoke with the Jonin that I wanted to help train you and ask them to be receptive of the idea. To be honest this type of cross training has fantastic potential benefits. It's really only tradition that stopped us before. That makes sense Kakashi sensei, so who am I training with? Is it Asuma? I know he has the same elemental affinity as I do, I bet he could teach me a lot of jutsu. Kakashi gave his pupil an eye smile, it was a good guess. No Naruto you get to be trained by one of Kanoa's very own legends. Naruto was positively drooling while he wondered who it could be. Jiraiya of the Sanin. Naruto's eyes grew big, he's the one who taught the fourth Hokage, and the fourth Hokage taught you. Kakashi nodded, pleased to see his student had continued his reading. Sasuke was jealous of Naruto's opportunity however two things stopped him from speaking up. First and foremost he knew it would just cause him problems with Kakashi, it would be stupid to irritate the man. Secondly he was actually looking forward to working with Lee. This would be a real chance to test how strong he was against a competent genin. It would be a good measuring stick to see at what level his skills were. All right team 7, make me proud while I'm gone. I should return prior to the Chunin exams. After the exams I'll look for a nice B mission we can go on. The genin smiled confidently, most genin could not go on B rank missions but most genin didn't have Kakashi Hataki as their sensei. 
Asterisk break asterisk asterisk Sakura reported to her first lesson with Kuranai. Kuranai was curious about the pink-haired Jenin. She had heard the rumors that Team 7 was dysfunctional and that the girl was the worst type of fan girl. Before Kakashi had left he had taken Kuranai aside and stated he had downplayed his team a bit and that Sakura had put her fan girl ways behind her. It was a good thing to otherwise Kuranai would have put the poor girl through the ringer. Even so Kuranai wanted to test the girl. Kakashi was unreadable behind his mask and one never could be certain of the angle he was working. His team wasn't selected for the Chunin exams. That meant something and she hoped it didn't mean she would have to waste her time with a talentless slacker mooning over a boy who wouldn't return her affections. Sakura arrived 10 minutes early. One point in her favor, the red-eyed Jonan thought. Sakura presented herself properly and inclined her head. Thank you for agreeing to teach me Kuranai Sensei. Respectful too, but let's see how strong of a shinobi she is. Kuranai silently and subtly placed a genjutsu on her charge. She was shocked when within a second Sakura clapped her hands together, Kai. The genjutsu had not been a powerful one so it was disrupted by Sakura's chakra release. Kuranai was impressed. Being able to detect a genjutsu like that was impressive, she knew some chunin who weren't as adept as this girl was. Very good Sakura, I see Kakashi had provided some training on detecting genjutsu. Sakura responded, Hi Kuranai Sensei. It spoke highly of Kakashi's teaching abilities that he had taught them how to detect genjutsu. She had secretly expected Kakashi to focus on the flashier aspects of the shinobi arts. She had often thought with a 1000 jutsus Kakashi's only response to a problem would be to throw a ninjutsu at it. While Kuranai was primarily there to learn genjutsu she wanted to test her other abilities. Sakura, we are going to spa, keep it to taijutsu. Sakura immediately raised her hands into an academy fighting stance. The Jonin rushed forward, not at full speed but fast enough to cause most Jonin problems. Sakura dodged the blow and slide around her opponent. Kuranai followed up her initial rush with a rapid fire kick that Sakura ducked. Kuranai let her foot land and then pumped Chakra into her feet speeding her forward in a rush. Sakura rolled to the side, reacting instantly to the attack. Kuranai was again surprised. So far Sakura had avoided all of her attacks by a fair margin. Kuranai upped her speed a bit and pressed forward with a rapid fire combination of punches and kicks. Sakura twisted to the side of the kicks and pushed the punches away with an open palm. Sakura was purely defensive in her motion but that defense was amazing. Kuranai again upped her speed. Sakura continued avoiding every blow she could and deflected attacks that couldn't be completely avoided. The pink-haired teenager even lashed out with a low stomp aimed at the genjutsu mistress's ankle. Kuranai avoided the blow and responded by coming in fast with a palm strike. In a move that seemed to defy gravity her opponent bent backwards avoiding the blow. Kuranai stiffed her fingers with the hand that missed the blow and drove them straight down at the genin's exposed torso only for Sakura's arm to deflect the attack, flip her lower body over completely and kick out with both legs. Kuranai blocked the blow with her forearm but the momentum drove her back a step. Sakura pushed off with her legs and created separation between the two. Kuranai stared at Sakura. Kami, that girl is good. What is Kakashi thinking specializing her in taijutsu like this? While impressive, the academy reports show her to have exceptional chakra control. Medical jutsu or genjutsu should be her primary focus. Kuranai did not realize that Sakura was not taijutsu focused. She did not realize that Sakura had already a base working knowledge of medical procedures if not the medical jutsus themselves. She did not realize Sakura already had mastered two separate genjutsu and an offensive elemental ninjutsu. At that moment Kuranai was frustrated that a potential genjutsu expert in the making had been neglected because of who her sensei was. If Kakashi hadn't gone on that mission would that arrogant fool have never let this girl shine in genjutsu? Kuranai angrily thought. Kuranai brought her speed up to that of a chunin level shinobi. She lashed out partially in anger with a devastating series of blows, allowing some of her true power to bleed into them. It was with growing astonishment that Sakura continued to evade the blows. Now the blows were missing by a hair's breadth but they were missed. Sakura twisted and elongated her body like an escape artist, she rarely needed to block but when she did it was placed perfectly. Kuranai was not a taijutsu expert. In a pure taijutsu conflict there wasn't a jonin in the leaf that wasn't her superior. That being said she was still upper chunin level in her taijutsu abilities. 
Sakura was making a mockery of that fact however. Granted Sakura had been focused almost purely on defense, less than a handful of offensive strikes were shown. But when it came to pure dodging ability the girl was massively ahead of Kurenai's own team. Kurenai finally had enough and moved to her maximum level of speed. Sakura managed to continue dodging for another 30 seconds before the Jonin managed to get in a good palm strike to the chest knocking her down. Kurenai had broken a sweat and was actually breathing a bit heavily. In a moment of shock Kurenai realized that Sakura wasn't any more winded than she was. I'm still angry at Kakashi for not focusing the girl on an appropriate shinobi path that could use her excellent level of chakra control but this, this is ridiculous. The girl went from being near last in taijutsu combat to being at least chunin level at avoidance and evasion in less than six months. That was well done Sakura. No one on my team could have lasted that long, I see Kakashi has trained you in taijutsu quite well. Sakura rubbed her chest for a moment and responded, thank you very much Kurenai sensei. Kurenai smiled at the girl, she reminded her a bit of Shino. Shino was very reserved and didn't talk much unless asked to. The girl wasn't shy, just reserved. Was she really a fangirl in the academy? She acts nothing like it. Now that you've seen what can happen when you come across someone stronger than you in taijutsu fight, how would learning genjutsu help you? Sakura considered her answer and responded, in a variety of ways, against you it would have been ineffective because of your genjutsu mastery however most shinobi don't have your skills. First, being able to place a genjutsu before the fight even begins could allow me to win the fight. Second during the fight I could have used a genjutsu to distract you, if I could do so even momentarily I could have pulled a kunai and gone in for the kill. Kurenai laughed softly, I agree with your first answer but the second answer is far more difficult than you realize. In the middle of a taijutsu spar it can extremely difficult to focus your genjutsu while avoiding blows. Sakura frowned thoughtfully, it was difficult but her instructor made it sound nearly impossible. Kurenai was adept at reading body language and said, I see you are doubting my words, you'll see what I mean after I teach you your first genjutsu. Sakura realized that Kurenai had not been fully briefed by Kakashi Sensei. She spoke up, pardon Kurenai Sensei but I already know a few. Kurenai looked slightly disturbed by the announcement. Kakashi did teach his student genjutsu and taught her this level of taijutsu. Kurenai shook her head, I assume you know Magen, Narakumi no jutsu. Demonic illusion. Hell viewing technique. Hi. What else? I know Magen, Kokoni Arazu no jutsu, demonic illusion, false surroundings technique and one other tailor-made jutsu. Kurenai forced her features to impassiveness but on the inside she was dumbfounded. The girl knew three genjutsus and one of them custom made. Use the last one on me Sakura. Sakura nodded and gathered chakra around her. Him not good, most shinobi could sense that. I guess Kakashi can't teach everything perfectly. Raten, Mahi, lighting release, paralysis. Sakura shouted as her hands blurred through hand seals. Kurenai sensed the genjutsu immediately and dispelled it however she was quite speechless as she thought through what she had just been hit with. The drawing of chakra was not a downside of this genjutsu. The entire point was misdirection. The opponent would think that a ninjutsu was being used on them, never suspecting that it was actually a genjutsu. What's more is that the girl had created the genjutsu flawlessly. If Kurenai had not been expecting a genjutsu even she may not have realized right away that it was a genjutsu. The attack was genius and the girl had mastered it. Mastered it, not just functionally used it but actually mastered it. Kurenai took a deep breath and tried to calm down. Alright, I'm new to being a jonin instructor. It's obvious that Kakashi is better at this than me. One day I can be there too. But for the life of me I don't understand why Team 7 wasn't placed in the Chunin exams. It's possible that the team just has internal conflict or that Naruto is completely dead weight but I can't imagine Kakashi couldn't improve even the dead last in the academy given the rapid and amazing growth of this girl. Ina Sakura felt a bit smug, it was clear that Kurenai had not expected her to be this far advanced. Ha. Huh. Take that. No one should doubt Team 7. Outwardly Sakura remained calm and ready for her instruction to begin. Kurenai quieted her thoughts and pushed them aside. All right Sakura you have surprised me. When I saw your taijutsu skills I had expected little to no effort made on learning genjutsu. I was wrong. Have you practiced genjutsu during sparring? Can you use it in the middle of a fight? Hi Kurenai sensei. 
Kakashi Sensei has had me spar with Sasuke and Naruto while using Genjutsu. Kakashi Sensei says that I won't always have the luxury of getting the drop on an opponent and that I should always be aware of my surroundings while using any jutsu, genjutsu or otherwise. It was sound advice but typically that was beyond the skills of a mere genin. All right Sakura, I have less than a month to enhance your skills. Initially I had expected to simply give you a foundation in genjutsu for you to grow on but with your ability, frankly Sakura I plan on teaching you some very potent genjutsu. If you aren't able to learn them right away please do not think less of yourself. Sakura cracked a smile, Kurenai sensei, I will do my best. It is an honor to be your student. Kurenai could detect no falsehood or fake flattery. Kurenai had someone on her hands that every teacher and sensei dreamed of. A willing, ready, talented and eager student who wanted to learn their specialty. Kurenai smiled and began teaching Sakura on how to become the next genjutsu mistress of Kanoa. Asterisk break asterisk Sasuke had been told to arrive at 5 a.m. to meet Guy and Lee. Waking up early wasn't a huge deal but the sun hadn't even risen yet. Sasuke wasn't going to complain however and arrived promptly. Guy and Lee were already doing push-ups. As Sasuke arrived Guy continued his workout as he shouted, Sasuke. You are early, how youthful of you. Sasuke stared at the green-clad Jonan. The man was so loud. He bet Naruto would have fit in much better with Guy than he was going to. Sasuke responded, I am here to train with you Guy Sensei. What should I do first? Guy smiled widely making his teeth clean, we have one hour left in our morning workout just copy us and then you and Lee Kun will spar. Sasuke complied and began doing a truly obnoxious amount of push-ups, squats and lunges. Sasuke thanked Kakashi for his conditioning otherwise he would never have been able to keep up. After the hour of hell was done Guy wanted Lee and Sasuke to spar. Both of you remove your weights. Lee was surprised by the command but obeyed. They dropped raising quite a din. HNN those weights are heavier than mine, good thing I have my Sharingan. Sasuke activated the seal that reduced the weight to nothing. He stretched a bit moving around getting used to his speed without the weights. Guy shouted, begin. Sasuke activated his Sharingan and saw Lee blur toward him. With the Sharingan he easily followed Lee's movements, he saw the telegraphed flying sidekick with ease. He lifted his arm to block and took the blow. That was a mistake. Lee struck with tremendous force causing Sasuke to skid across the ground barely retaining his feet. He could feel a bruise already starting to form on his arm. Guy had not said it was only a taijutsu duel so he pulled out a brace of kunai and threw them at the charging Lee. Lee deflected all of the blades with ease but they slowed him down by a fraction of a second. Enough time for Sasuke to complete the kawarimi and substitute himself with his pack he had set down earlier. Lee smashed into the pack with another bone-crunching kick. Sasuke took the moment of reprieve to drop a smoke bomb down and create a shadow clone. Lee charged into the smoke and kicked out at the clone as the real Sasuke hid behind a tree with every ounce of his stealth. Lee lashed out with a taijutsu combo of kicks and punches that the clone dodged away from. The clone couldn't afford to block a single blow as that would make it dissipate even if the block was perfect. Sasuke analyzed the fight looking for a weakness. In terms of taijutsu Lee appeared to have none. However he did seem to attack with abandon, there was no thought about possibly stumbling into a trap. Sasuke wrapped an explosive seal around a kunai and then charged forward. Lee was caught off guard for a moment but quickly kicked out at the clone driving it back and then turned on the real Sasuke. Sasuke tossed the kunai up in the area, leapt up and preformed the kawarimi again, this time with his clone. His clone grasped the explosively wrapped kunai and saw Lee jump up to kick him hard. The clone let the kunai explode in his hand just as Lee struck. Sasuke timed the move to avoid causing Lee serious damage but the explosion blasted Lee down. His guard was down and the real Sasuke sped forward and tapped the falling Lee on the neck with his kunai, simulating the kill if it was a real fight. Lee sprang back up ready to continue but Guy halted the fight. Sasuke, my rival has taught you very well. You saw that my Lee Kun was stronger than you so you used your ninjutsu techniques to defeat him. Lee looked crestfallen. Cheer up Lee. This was just the first spa, your youth was too eager against such a tricky opponent. Not all shinobi fight head on, you must be able to avoid falling for their tricks, Sasuke will be a great sparring partner for you to train with. Hi guy sensei, next time I will beat him. 
And if I cannot beat him I will do 500 one-handed push-ups. And if I cannot do 500 one-handed push-ups I will run around the village on my hands. Sasuke felt a Kakashi eye twitch flickering on the left side of his face. This month is going to kill me, Sasuke grimly thought to himself. The next fight involved a pure taijutsu spa with Sasuke versus Lee. Sasuke knew he was going to be hard-pressed without ninjutsu to back up his fight. He didn't complain about it being unfair though, this was an opportunity to push himself against a specialist. Lee came in with another blistering fast and powerful kick. Sasuke ducked underneath the attack and lashed out with his own combination of strikes. Lee was faster and blocked each attack and pushed forward again. Sasuke could block attacks at an angle but could never take a straight hit without becoming bruised. Sasuke was pushed to his limit in the spa, his eyes allowed him to see each attack coming but the speed in which he had to defend and strike back at limited his possible moves. Sasuke was in excellent physical condition but this spa was testing that, after all he had worked himself ragged with the green duo's insane, warm up. Sasuke was slowing slightly and the avoided attacks were being missed by thinner and thinner margins. The desire to win and prove himself pushed him to try something different. Lee sent a haymaker to his right and he stepped back just barely enough to avoid, then he shoved Chakra into his feet and launched what amounted to a flying tackle at Lee. Sasuke's momentum was fast and even with Lee's speed he couldn't quite kick out in time. Sasuke slammed into Lee's torso and they hit the ground. The wind was knocked out of Lee as he gasped for breath. Sasuke attempted to capitalize it by lifting up and striking downward with a palm strike to the face. Even out of breath Lee was faster and caught Sasuke's hand as it descended. Sasuke was then thrown up and away from Lee. Lee jumped to his feet at the ready and rushed forward. The last Uchiha was frustrated his Naruto-like surprise move hadn't worked. The bout continued with Sasuke getting more and more worn down. Finally it happened, Lee's punch was blocked a fraction of a second too slow and clipped Sasuke's temple and he hit the ground seeing stars. Guy called a halt to the match. Stop it is over. You showcased your youthful spirits, I am very proud. Sasuke groaned as he got up. He needed to get faster and stronger too. If it wasn't for his Sharingan Lee could pick him apart with ease. Sasuke really wanted to rest for a few moments but Guy had them put on their weight load again and now it was time to sprint around the village. Sasuke felt his body quiver. Insane, these two are insane. Sasuke plowed on trying to keep up with two green monsters. Asterisk break asterisk asterisk Naruto had been instructed to meet Jiraiya by the hot springs. He wondered how much he had read about the great toad sage was actually true. Could he really summon a toad that could crush the Hokage Tower? Books he learned were marvelous information sources however they were not always factual. Stories tended to get embellished and sometimes the authors were biased or were not the primary source of information. Whatever the truth was he was ready for it. Or so he thought. Naruto waited for the sage to make himself known when he saw a man peeking into the girl's bath house. Naruto did a double take. The man was breaking three separated laws by what he was doing. Horror slowly dawned on him as he started to stare at the man. It couldn't be. This was the legendary Toad Sage. This was the last loyal Sanon. Naruto couldn't help himself. No way. Jiraiya the legendary Toad Sage is a pervert. Jiraiya had known of the boy's presence and had let him see what he was doing. He had not expected to have him announce him like this. The brat's volume alerted the girls that someone was peeking. You brat what do you think you were doing? Naruto was fuming. This was like learning your hero hated ramen. Jiraiya sped away as the angry women gave chase. Naruto sighed and took to the rooftops to follow the perverted old man. Eventually the girls lost track of him and Naruto confronted the tall legend again. You're supposed to train me, not peek on girls you pervy sage. Jiraiya laughed, and just why should I train you? Naruto glared at him, because Kakashi sensei arranged it, don't play dumb with me. Stop wasting time and get on with the training, I have to meet my team in a few hours. Jiraiya rubbed his chin, whom you want me. Jiraiya to train you. On your schedule. You must think highly of yourself kid. Naruto poked his thumb into his own chest and said, highly of myself. I'm going to be the next Hokage so damn right. Now what are you going to train me in first? Jiraiya scoffed, kid if, and it is an if, if I train you it is going to be on my schedule. You can play with your little friends later. 
Naruto shook his head, my sensei gave us instructions, and those aren't changing regardless of what you say. Jiraiya turned around, by then. Naruto shrugged, he wasn't changing his mind. He suspected he was being tested but if he wasn't it didn't matter, his team was more important than training with the old pervert. To Jiraiya's shock Naruto kept walking. Him Kakashi, that's pretty impressive loyalty you've got in that kid, either that or he's a complete idiot not realizing what he is missing. The white-haired spy master decided to follow the boy discreetly. The blonde went to a training ground and summoned two dozen clones. The clones spread out and worked on a number of things. Some walked up trees, others balanced dozens of leaves on various parts of their body rotating them in different directions. Still others helped the main Naruto with his workout. They tossed kunai at varying speeds at the original who deflected them all. Jiraiya was impressed with the kid. His control was quite good, and he knew that with the fox's chakra must have meant absolutely abysmal initial chakra control. The kid was also fast and worked on his conditioning while improving his combat abilities. Jiraiya made himself known and instantly Naruto was on guard as were the rest of his clones. Again Jiraiya was impressed as Naruto had preformed an almost undetectable Karurimi with one of his clones. If he had been assassin or opponent he would have targeted what he thought was the original. Our Kakashi or paranoia passes on to another generation. Naruto looked at the sage and said, I thought you weren't going to train me. I like your spunk brat but don't get carried away, if I am to train you I expect appropriate respect. Training that had been ingrained in him leapt to the fore, hi Jiraiya sensei. Jiraiya blinked. Shaking himself he said, all right I'm going to teach you an ace jutsu. Jiraiya told Naruto he was going to teach him to summon toads. He was surprised when Naruto knew instantly what he was talking about. I thought he was supposed to barely be able to read but he knows all about the various summons of the world. Jiraiya wondered if Kakashi had gotten his mitts on the boy while he was in the academy. It would explain his knowledge base and skill level. Jiraiya went through the summoning and summoned a toad and presented the contract to Naruto. Naruto was all smiles and gratefully signed his name in blood on the contract. All right kid before you summon anything I want to talk to you about your chakra. Jiraiya asked if he ever felt another chakra source available to him during certain times. No, but I've avoided trying to tap into the nine-tailed fox's chakra. What? How? Did Kakashi tell you about this? Naruto shook his head, no Jiraiya sensei, I read that a Jinchuriki can tap into the power of the demon they have sealed inside of themselves. However not being a seal master and knowing the nine tails fearsome reputation I thought it best not to even try. Jiraiya was a bit put out at not being able to explain anything to his god son. Well I am seal master so go ahead and give it a try. Naruto assumed a meditative pose and turned his sight inward. His chakra surrounded his body and he tried to feel it, looking for any sign of chakra that was different. After several minutes he opened his eyes, I'm not sure how. All of my chakra feels the same. Jiraiya gave a theatrical sigh, exhaust yourself of chakra almost to the point of chakra exhaustion and then try the summoning jutsu. Naruto responded with a, hi Jiraiya sensei, and sprang into action. He created 50 clones and had them all fire a futon. Daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough, into the sky. Jiraiya was impressed by the kid's chakra reserves. They surpassed even his estimation. The kid's not bad with control but the way he is using the jutsu is very ineffective. Jiraiya had not yet realized that Naruto was deliberately overpowering the jutsu in a wasteful manner to better exhaust his reserves. Finally Naruto stopped and panted, my chakra reserves are really low, can I try the summoning jutsu now? The toad sage nodded, go ahead, and if you feel another chakra source latch onto it and use it. Naruto took a deep breath, bit his thumb and went through the hand seals. Kuchio's no jutsu. Summoning technique. Naruto slammed his hand onto the ground and a puff of smoke obscured view for a few moments. As the smoke cleared Naruto saw that he had successfully summoned a toad, however the size of the creature was a bit sad. The small orange toad waved and said, yo. Naruto looked at the creature flatly. Jiraiya laughed, ha ha kid, you have got to me kidding me. Is that the best you can do? Naruto glared at his temporary sensei and said, if I hadn't had all my chakra drained I would have done much better. Jiraiya snorted, if you had harnessed the QB chakra like I told you to it wouldn't be an issue. Gamakichi looked at the two shinobi and interrupted, hey why did you summon me? And do you have any snacks? 
Naruto took a deep breath trying to suppress his frustration. He inclined his head to the summoned toad. Hello Gamakichi-san I was attempting to try the Kuchio's no jutsu summoning technique for the first time and you arrived. Gamakichi looked at the boy and did a shrug, or at least the miniature toad equivalent of one. So, snacks. Naruto shook his head in apology, I am sorry Gamakichi-san, next time I summon you I will have snacks. Gamakichi sighed, be seeing you then, and with that he returned to the land of toads. The legendary Sanon shook his head, you're still using your own chakra. You need to use the other chakra you have inside of you. Naruto shouted, how? Give me an exercise or training or something, don't just tell me to do something and not show me how to do it. Jiraiya was amused at the boy's tantrum, apparently Kakashi hadn't completed turned him into the perfect disciplined shinobi yet. Look brat, I'm the one training you. Try meditating again. Naruto grumbled to himself and meditated. After about 30 minutes Jiraiya asked, anything. Naruto opened one eye, if I felt anything different I would have told you. Jiraiya flicked Naruto's forehead sending him backwards. Naruto tumbled back up to his feet. I have to get going Jiraiya sensei, my team is meeting soon. The Sanon nodded, all right kid go train with your friends, we'll try again tomorrow. Asterisk break asterisk the three genin of team seven met and went over what they were learning. Sasuke and Naruto were on the ragged edge due to near chakra exhaustion for Naruto and complete and utter physical exhaustion with Sasuke. Sakura was in the best shape. They took it easy and did some simple exercises that Kakashi had left them to build on teamwork. Combination attacks, clone tactics and team signal memorization. As a team they talked about what they were learning. Sasuke talked about the insane green duo. While he wasn't learning a flashy jutsu he was confident in being able to improve his taijutsu. If he could move at the speed and strength of Lee and use his Sharingan he felt his hand-to-hand -hand skills would match up fairly well with a Jonin. The others didn't disagree. Sakura laughed and talked about how her sensei was flabbergasted at the skills she possessed. She also talked about the A-rank jutsu that Kurenai was going to be teaching her. Genjutsu was something that the three thought would be very valuable, being able to pin an opponent in place while the kill strike was delivered would make taking out threats easy and nearly risk-free. Naruto was at a crossroads. He didn't want to lie to his team but he also was worried about revealing his secret. Would Sakura and Sasuke look at him differently? Would they call him a demon and a monster? Naruto wanted to give them more credit than that but he was scared. He finally belonged to something. Sure he had a competitive rivalry with Sasuke but they worked together in almost perfect harmony. And even though Sakura-chan hadn't agreed to go on a date she had stopped hitting him and actually seemed to enjoy his company. Could he risk all of that by telling them about the damn demon in his belly? Sakura looked at Naruto who was strangely silent and contemplative. Naruto, what's on your mind? Aren't you going to tell us about your training? Naruto trembled and remained silent. Sakura looked on worriedly, Naruto. Naruto, what is the matter with you? Sasuke activated his Sharingan to double check that Naruto was Naruto. Seeing that he was in fact Naruto he remained silent. Guys, I'm really glad to be on your team. Sasuke quirked an eyebrow, where was Naruto going with this? Naruto took a deep breath. I have something to tell you, a secret that only the adults of the village know. Sakura could see her teammate was struggling and, what was he to her? A friend. Yes her friend. Her friend was terrified. Naruto, whatever it is just tell us. Naruto smiled at his pink-haired teammate and said, the nine-tailed fox wasn't killed. It was sealed inside a baby. I was that baby. I'm a Jinchuriki. A weight seemed to lift off of Naruto for a moment, he had said it. Whatever happened from here on wasn't up to him anymore. Sakura widened her eyes in shock. The Kyuubi wasn't dead. That monster was inside of Naruto. Sasuke barely had any outward reaction. Instead he said, what are you worried about? No one with an ounce of sense could think you were the nine-tailed fox. It's the most powerful of all the Biju, a monster that destroyed entire divisions of Shinobi. Sasuke paused, and you're Adobe, little different isn't it? Naruto gaped at Sasuke. Then he laughed. Tears welled in Naruto's eyes. Sasuke didn't care if he was a demon container. He looked at Sakura who smiled at their antics. Naruto, you're our teammate. If you were evil do you think the Hokage would let you become a shinobi? Naruto rubbed his eyes, I guess I've been worried about nothing then. His two teammates nodded. 
After a moment Sasuke said, you still haven't told us what you're learning to do. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and said, ah oh, well that's what brought this on. Pervy Sage is trying to teach me how to tap into QB Chakra. Sakura did two double takes. Jiraiya wanted Naruto to use the Nine Tails Chakra. The second double take was in regards to what Naruto called the legendary Sanon. Pervy Sage. Show respect Naruto Barker. Naruto laughed, but he is a pervy sage. He was peeking on women when I first met him. Sakura rolled her eyes, Naruto you go from sharing a deep dark secret to making bad jokes. Your lucky Kakashi sensei isn't here. Naruto scowled at the pink haired girl and muttered under his breath. The three started working on some of their combination attacks. Naruto's chakra reserves were low but he had enough to fire a few jutsus. He showed them his chakra blades and Sakura refined her genjutsu on clones that Naruto and Sasuke then dispatched with jutsu combination attacks. Naruto was happy. Completely exhausted but happy. His teammates hadn't changed at all after learning his secret. They treated him the same. I was worried for nothing, I'm glad I told them. Naruto collapsed into bed. Even his massive reserves were spent. Tomorrow morning he was going to work with the pervy sage again. Naruto hoped they would work on something different. He had been getting along just fine without tapping into the damn fox. Why was it so important? Naruto's thoughts were cut off by the immediate arrival of sleep. Asterisk break asterisk the next few days were filled with frustration for Naruto. He would exhaust himself depleting chakra only to try to summoning and bringing in nothing larger than Gamakichi. Gamakichi didn't mind because Naruto had done as promised and brought snacks but for Naruto it was aggravating. It reminded him of when he was in the academy and couldn't get anything right. Naruto was beginning to suspect Jiraiya had no idea how to get him to draw upon the fox's chakra. Which would make sense, it wasn't like he had trained a Jinchuriki before. One morning he decided to do things differently. The Toad Sage had instructed him to exhaust his chakra again. Naruto smirked and said, him all right let me try pushing my chakra into one big move, maybe that will be faster. Jiraiya suspiciously eyed the boy but nodded. Naruto turned around flashed through the hand seals and shouted, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique. This time Naruto was not exhausted. This time he was pushing his refined chakra as strongly as he could into the summon. He envisioned a massive toad, one that would make Gamakichi look like the runt. The Sanon's eyes widened as a massive cloud of smoke erupted and he felt a familiar chakra presence. Naruto suddenly found himself up in the air on the back of a giant toad. Yatta. Naruto looked down on what he was standing on. The toad was massive and magenta colored. Unlike Gamakichi he wore clothing. The black kimono partially concealed the mesh armor he wore underneath. In his hands he had a sasumata and across his back was a shield that looked almost like a plate. The young Jinchuriki was ecstatic about the size of the summon. The large toad rumbled underneath him, him Jiraiya did you summon me. Jiraiya shook his head, no Gamekan san, that was my apprentice on your head who summoned you. The massive toad responded with another deep rumble, I did not see him, how clumsy of me. You must be Naruto. Naruto laughed again, no big deal, it's great to meet you Gamekan san. The toad nodded his head slowly, likewise Naruto san. Why did you summon me? Naruto explained that he wanted to try summoning larger toads than just Gamakichi and that if he tied it when he was well rested and had full access to his chakra he thought he could do it. Jiraiya interjected, Naruto, the purpose was to use the Kyubi chakra not bother important toads. You shouldn't call a battle toad unless it is truly needed. Gamakan rumbled, I'm not that important. Jiraiya smacked his face with his palm, he would have liked it if his trusted battle ally had backed him up. Naruto huffed, what is your problem pervy sage? Just because I didn't use QB chakra doesn't meant his isn't an incredibly powerful ability. You taught me something that will let me take out John and level threats. Stop calling me that. One day you'll need to tap into that chakra, and you'll need to control it. The Yondime designed that seal so that you could use that QB chakra. You insult his legacy by not using that power. Naruto sobered a bit. While still very happy with the result of his jutsu he didn't want to denigrate the legacy of the greatest shinobi Kanoa has ever produced. It did make him think why had the Yondime had designed the seal that way. Well sorry about that Gamekan san I'll only summon you if I really need to next time. Gamekan nodded solemnly and then dissipated. Naruto smoothly landed on the ground and faced the taller man. 
Jiraiya sensei what I'm doing currently isn't working. What else can I try? Exhaust your chakra and keep trying, I have an idea we can try tomorrow. Naruto created his shadow clones and began to deplete all of his chakra. Time for extreme measures kid, Jiraiya thought. Since Naruto had used a large amount of chakra summoning Gamekin it didn't take too long between shadow clones and ninjutsu for his chakra reserves to fall lower. Jiraiya saw that the boy was winded and walked next to the panting Jinchuriki and flicked his forehead protector with a heavy dose of power. Naruto sailed into the nearby chasm. Now you'll have to us the demon chakra or you'll die. Naruto was enraged. Has he gone senile? Naruto attempted to grasp the edge of the canyon but the sides were slick with water runoff. Naruto pulled out one of his chakra kunai, wrapped wire around it and hurled it at the side of the canyon. It blasted through rock until the force was spent and lodged in firmly. Naruto grasped the other of the wire around a second kunai that he held onto. His grip was sure and he then swung directly at the wall no longer falling only downward. Naruto channeled the tiny amount of chakra he had left into his feet to brace the blow as he slammed into the side of the wall. Jiraiya didn't hear the summoning jutsu. Kami what have I done? Jiraiya raced to the edge looking down to see an angry Naruto hanging from ninja wire. Pervy sage you Baka, you could have killed me. The Sanan shouted back, why didn't you use the summoning jutsu? I don't have enough chakra. I'd only succeed in killing myself and Gamakichi. The toad sage shook his head, I've traveled the land you ungrateful brat. In times of stress and danger Jinchuriki naturally draw upon the chakra sealed within them. I know what I'm doing. Now quit playing around and do it. Jiraiya with far superior chakra control raced down the side of the canyon and slashed the ninja wire sending Naruto plummeting once more. Are you bastard pervy sage? Naruto continued falling. His respect for the Sanan was decreasing by each meter her fell. This guy is just guessing, I could really die. With that sudden burst of panic and thought of incoming death Naruto fell within himself. Looking around he saw what looked to be a sewer of some kind. This must be within the seal, either that or a genjutsu. Just to be safe Naruto gathered his chakra. Kai, still in the same spot he walked toward the feel of the dreadful chakra. Before the massive prison of the QB he watched. The fox rushed forward metaphorically slamming against the bars of the cage. Naruto did not think the fox could hurt him and stared impassively at the monstrous creature. You finally decided to visit, the deep-throated growl emerged the fox's form. Not by choice demon. Then why are you here boy? Because some crazy old man wants me to use your chakra and right now I'm falling down a chasm and am about to die unless you pay some damn rent. Give me some of your chakra or we are both dead. The fox laughed, so bold. Since I have no desire to end like this, very well. Naruto felt the red hot chakra flood his body and with a cry he was again falling down the canyon. Eyes burning with red chakra he sped through the hand seals just in time. Kuchio's no jutsu summoning technique, the chakra formed and summoned none other than the toad boss himself, Gamabunta. Asterisk break asterisk asterisk Naruto hated being in the hospital. He had been taken there after his test with Gamabunta. The sour old toad was just as bad as Jiraiya. Both of them were insane, he wouldn't be surprised if their past was littered with dead apprentices who hadn't succeeded one of their little initiation trials. Naruto supposed that wasn't fully fair but at the moment he didn't care, he was in one of the worst places in Kanoa. The hospital. I'll make my escape soon, Naruto promised. Naruto decided as he was resting and recovering from the exhaustion and wounds he had endured trying to cling to Gamabunta that he wouldn't be summoning the chief toad very often. If he needed assistance in the form of a giant toad he'd go with the more accommodating Gamakan. While he was a bit taciturn he didn't try to throw him to his death. Naruto also hated not being there for team practice. It felt like he was letting his team down which really chafed because both of his teammates had been completely accepting of his status as a Jinchuriki. Naruto forced himself to get a little bit more rest. He would not miss the meeting time on the next day. Closing his eyes he wondered if the pervy sage had any other training planned and if it would be any more reasonable. Asterisk break asterisk the month continued to pass with all three genin improving. Sakura's practical knowledge of genjutsu was quickly making her one of the most dangerous kind of opponents. The kind that can kill you before you even realize you were in danger. Even Sasuke's Sharingan wasn't proof against her new genjutsu techniques.
Sasuke and Naruto's ability to detect and break Genjutsu also rose as a byproduct of Sakura's new abilities. Sasuke had thought Kakashi's training was intense. Guy and Lee continued to run him ragged. It was only thanks to his Sharingan and his own natural grace that prevented some kind of serious injury to Sasuke. But with the intense training along with the increasing weight Sasuke's Taijutsu skills were approaching near Jonin levels. His speed and strength alone weren't enough to put him at that skill tier but when combined with the predictive power of the Sharingan it was doubtful any Chunin in the village could match him in Taijutsu. Naruto actually fell a bit behind Sasuke in Taijutsu. While his greater stamina continued to make his strength and speed superior to Sasuke, the intense practice Sasuke received combined with the Sharingan meant he was flat out better than Naruto in Taijutsu. This spurred Naruto to train even harder. Naruto's time with Jiraiya was not spent on Taijutsu at all. Jiraiya decided that Naruto had made enough progress with accessing the Kyubi Chakra for now. The next time on the training agenda was something that he figured would take Naruto a long time to learn. The raising gun. However much to the Toad Sage's surprise Naruto quickly learned the technique. The cage bunshin allowed Naruto to quickly pick up the beginning steps of the training. A dozen Naruto's training allowed for the total number of training hours to effectively multiply his efforts by a factor of 10. In addition all of the hard work Kakashi had pushed for from Naruto on chakra control was paying dividends. Within just one week Naruto had formed the raising gun and could use it in a fight. Jiraiya often looked on as Team 7 trained after their morning exercises with the various temporary sensais. The genin actually put genjutsu and minor non-lethal traps around their secluded training area but for one of Jiraiya's skills it was child's play to avoid them. Watching them was a treat for him. Their teamwork was remarkable and the degree of advancement they had in comparison to the academy reports was mind-boggling. The clay may have been of extremely high quality but none could deny Kakashi being the master potter. Jiraiya knew that barring something terrible happening he was looking upon the next Sanon. My hope is that they don't end in tragedy like we did. Asterisk break asterisk asterisk Kakashi returned from his S-class mission and reported immediately to the Sandime. Haruzen asked for the report. It is as we feared, Orokimaru is either leading or helping Otogaku. Haruzen took a puff on his pipe, why did he put Oto Genin through the Chunin exams? Kakashi responded, unknown. Nothing of their plans was written outside of research notes, and those were fit only for burning. Haruzen narrowed his eyes and Kakashi quickly added, not that I did. While not positive I believe it more likely than not that I escaped detected. Sarutobi could not help but feel guilt for how Orokimaru turned out. This is troubling Kakashi, we need to know what he is planning. Was this just an attempt to gather information about Kanoa? Is he simply trying to integrate Oto into the Shinobi world to draw income and missions? Kakashi considered before answering. All possibilities but he may also be looking to do more harm than just that. He could be looking to kill you, kill any enemies he left behind or sabotage our reputation by disrupting the Chunin exams. Nothing is beyond that monster. And that is what worries me Kakashi. I am getting too old to anticipate all the possible threats. I shouldn't be the hawkish Kakashi. My mind is not as sharp as it once was, to say nothing of my diminishing chakra reserves. Kakashi stared at the man known as the, God of Shinobi, and knew what he was going to ask. It's time I pass the hat on Kakashi. Kanoa deserves a hockage that can protect it properly. Kakashi looked away. Kakashi, it must be you. You have the skill, you have the temperament and the reputation needed. It must be you. Kakashi did not look at the hockage. He knew the Hokage was weary, tired beyond mortal endurance. He had retired once and been forced to take up the hat and all its cares again. The simple fact was that Kakashi didn't think he was worthy of the hat. He had failed Rin and Obito. He had lost others while he was in Anbu. He was a skilled shinobi, if conflict occurred he was needed in the field not behind a desk. Moreover he was not fit for the Hokage, not for a village like the Leaf. Hokage Sama, you do not want me as a Hokage. I respect the tradition and the history of this village. I understand why you and the others allow the civilians a place on the council. Haruzen watched Kakashi carefully. His eyes met the one eye Kakashi kept uncovered. But I disagree. The civilians of this village have made us weaker. They are the principal source of the hatred against Naruto. If I am Hokage I will do as I see fit and the civilian council can be executed for treason and incompetence. The old man sighed heavily. 
Kakashi, Kanoa is different only because of the way we treat our civilians. It is mutual respect that makes Kanoa special. Surely you wouldn't end that. The Jonan looked at the Sandime intently, Lord Hockage, I do not have the vision needed to be a Hockage. I am a soldier, an excellent shinobi. I value the lives of my comrades and will keep them safe. I have no patience for politics and the needs of money grubbers. I know my limitations. I do not have the patience to appease the civilians. Kakashi went further, I am not saying you are wrong. My wisdom is simply more limited. If I am the Hokage I cannot rule as you would but as I see fit. I know this is incompatible with your vision for Kanoa's future which is why I cannot be the next Hokage. Haruzan collapsed in his chair. Kakashi, who else is there? Kakashi lowered his head. That was the problem. Who else was there? Finally he said, Jiraiya has the strength. He also would echo the will of fire that you hold. Haruzan shook his head, he won't do it either. His spy network is personally maintained and on there are rumblings Kakashi, he needs to keep the network active. In that case Shikaku Nara would serve admirably. Not strong enough, Haruzan countered. So, keep the best Anbu guards on him for protection. He will make the right decisions. The Hokage also muttered, with as lazy as he is the paperwork would never get done and our economy would self-destruct. Kakashi shrugged, it's not a perfect choice but right now there are no good choices. For now you are still S-class level. I am not a medical nin I can't tell you how much longer that will be the case but for now you are the best choice. Very well Kakashi, since you will not take the mantle it will be my burden. Let's discuss what needs to be done about Oto and Orokimaru. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.